G'day everyone, this is Chaser Weekend. We're the same blokes, different location. <laughs> Gaz and Matt, how are ya? Today we're talking about second batteries in the back of your vehicle. <laughs> Becoming increasingly popular all the time and to the point of they're starting to become a must have. Absolutely. If you want to run a fridge or some camp lights or even an inverter, you're gonna to need to have a battery. So the, the best place to put one, the back of your car. And then you got a charger. But tell me this, Matt, you made me go and buy this DC-DC charger and put it in the car and run it. What, what is it? What does it do? How does it work? Well, lucky you're here, because we're going to talk about that right now. Techie, techie. So we've come a long way since the days of the isolator, right? Well, if, what's a battery isolator first? What does that do? Well, it literally isolates your batteries. So typically you would have two batteries under your bonnet. Yep. And then you'd have a, an isolator or a solid state relay or something like that, voltage sensitive relay. And it would isolate your second battery from your start battery. So if you did have a fridge running in the back, it's not going to drain your start battery. It'll only you, drain the one battery down. Yeah, it'll yeah. drain down to a set point. The problem with those isolators is that uh, they're pretty they're, they're pretty old school, right? So modern diesel engines in particular will have a smart alternator or a, a temperature compensating alternator. What that means is that they know when there's no load on the engine, say you're driving on the highway or something like that, they'll switch off. So what happens with an isolator is it sees battery voltage drop, it isolates your second battery, it's not getting any charge. All of a or, sudden your fridge is hot. Yeah, so the whole time you're driving on the highway, your second battery is not getting any charge. Right. Or the, the other thing that happens is that the uh, they don't put out as much voltage as the old school alternators. So yeah. your voltage turn on point, you might not even get there. Might not reach it, yeah. So there is a workaround and it's probably the preferred way, well, it is the preferred way to charge a battery anyway, and that's with a DC to DC charger. All right, well, let's talk about it and find out how it works and what, what, what it does. All right, well, I've got one here. Uh, this is a Victron Orion, it's a 12 to 12, which means it's a 12 volt supply, 12 volt feed, uh, 30 amp rated, this little fella here. It's got Bluetooth as well. And what it does is it will work the same as a wall charger one yeah, that okay. you plug in your wall charge your battery up except it's dc in dc out so it'll take your voltage that's coming in and boost it and keep it charge nice and constant on the output side yeah, okay. this one here is fully programmable so you can set your turn on and your turn off voltages so that if you do have a smart alternator it you can set your voltage so you might have it. You can it. control when it comes on and off. Yep. Yeah. So you okay. might set it at 12.6 volts, turn off at 12.5 volts. So as soon as it gets a little bit, it's on, it's boosting whatever charge is there, charging up your other battery, and then as soon as it drops down again, it'll turn off. Um, and they, um, the Bluetooth app idea is really good because you can actually keep an eye on that, those voltages and what it's actually doing. So. Yeah, not while you're driving though. No. But your passenger could, definitely. <laughs> you could rock up. Uh, at camp or whatever, turn your app on, have a look. Should we get it out? Let's have a get it out and have a look. Get it out. You're the master of the, <laughs> of the cuts. This one here has a five year warranty too, which is really good. It's an isolated option, which means the input is isolated from the output. All right, so in the box, we've got a little plug with a jump lead that goes in the bottom. That's for a remote on off switch. There it is right there. Uh, manual, don't need that. There we go, nice compact unit. There's your terminals right there. Big heat sink on the back, um, keep it cool. So when you install it, take care to note that it's gonna use natural convection through there so you don't want anything you don't want it sitting on anything and you don't want anything hard up the top 
and you don't want to install it like that because then it's not going to work. So this little uh, jumper, it won't work if you don't put it in. So that literally just clips in there. Happy days. Screw it on your wall. Job done. With your programming, it's all done via Bluetooth app, Victron Connect app. So you just download it, turn your Bluetooth on, search for the device, it'll come up, uh, Victron Orion or something like that, connect to it. The uh, passcode is 000000 as default. You can change that. It'll actually prompt you to change it so that uh, no one else can get into it. And then it's as easy as doing the settings. In the top right corner, there is a little cog symbol. Hit that, and it'll go through function. What do we want to use it as? So we want it as a charger. Battery settings, you need to get this off your battery supplier. So factory default, we want to go have a look on here. Select preset, AGM, gel. Uh, these Victron settings are usually pretty good. If you've got a lithium, um, you'll have to get those details off your supplier. Uh, so let's go user defined, then we can make all of the settings that we want. Happy days. So there's plenty of uh, options out there to choose from. Yeah. So always seek advice from someone that knows what they're talking about. Um, don't be fooled by brand name. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna be the right fit for you. There's heaps out there. There's, yeah. there's Red Arc, SeaTech, Projector, Kings have one, uh, Matson has one. There's there's heaps of different options out there. Victron, obviously. So have a look at all the specs. Work out whether you want one that's just a straight DC to DC charger, or if you want one that has a solar regulator built in as well. And then get your head around the, the settings for those. So I noticed on this one, same as when I put mine in, it's got terminals there with screw tops as opposed to leads hanging out. So what? How does that work? Yep. How do we hook that up? Well, it's as simple as putting the cable in, but I do have a little tip for you. We use a bootlace ferrule. Ferrule. Bootlace crimp. <laughs> Something like that. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, not just for DC-DC charges, but anything with a screw terminal and you're using DC cable that has a high strand, bootlaces is the way to go. You can pick yourself up a little kit off eBay. They're like... 30 or 40 bucks and you get the crimp tool um, this one's a bit better than an ebay one but that's what it looks like and that's what the boot lace looks like so you don't necessarily need one that big obviously that's just for uh so you can see it so you can see it there we go yeah so we just want to strip the cable back be 10 mil or so Grab our right size boot lace. That's better. Get our boot lace on there. There we go. So I like to have a little bit of cable sticking out the end. And then we'll get our crimpers. Crimp it. Trim the ends off. Nice, tidy, fit it in there. Don't jam the plastic in your terminal. Screw it up, not super tight, but you want it firm. Job done. Now you might say, but Matt, why do I need a bootlace? I just do it like twist the cable and stick it in every time. That's all you do, that's all you gotta do. This way stops any little strands fraying out. Because what can happen with these terminals and a lot of terminals, you see how close they are? If you jam your cable in there, especially if your cable's you know a bit bigger and it's only just big enough to fit in there, you're gonna hedgehog it and you can get strands that go across and that'll bridge out and that'll short your unit out. Could even cause a fire. So Spend a couple of bucks, get bootlaces, do it properly. Well, there you go. That is just one brand that we can, um, that's the Victron brand, but one DC-DC charger, but a bit of explanation on how it works and what it actually does, because 
you know, it's um, it's the way that things are going with better technology now. So um, we might as well, when we know how to use it, might as well tell yep. you guys so you can use it too. Yeah. So it's not uh, all, like always consult with professionals. If you're going to attempt doing a DIY, make sure you get the information first. You don't want your car burning to the ground. So get the right cable size, get the right fusing. Happy days. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, if it's your first time, uh, hit the subscribe button so that you can see more content like this. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up because that helps spread it to other people so they can find out about this too. And remember, the weeks are long, but the weekends are short. So chase the weekend. <laughs> <laughs>